Hi guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at some further rationalizing. Now this has been a request from Moiel. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Um, hopefully this uh, is useful to you. So just to recap, we were looking at questions such as this. Um, 1 over root 3 or things like um, 2 over 2 root um, 3. Questions like this. So just on a recap, we times the top and the bottom by root 3. Remember, if I times the top and bottom by the same number, we don't actually change the value of the fraction, just the way it looks. The whole idea is that we want a rational number on the bottom. Okay, so let's expand the top. We get 1 times root 3 is just root 3, and root 3 times root 3 is just positive 3. So I've now rationalized the denominator as the denominator is a rational number. Likewise, on this question here, I can times top and bottom by root 3 as well. I could do 2 root 3 if I wanted to, but it means I have to simplify at the end of it. So now I get 2 root 3 all over. Well, root 3 times root 3 is just 3. So I get 2 times 3, which is 2 root 3 over 6. Okay, now I can actually simplify that. I can simplify that to being, oh, 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 3 times. So root 3 over 3. Okay, and actually, I could have done it to start off with the beginning part of it, and it was the same questions above. But you can see what I've done there. So, what do we mean by further rationalizing? So, we mean questions like this 1 over root 3 plus 4. So, now the denominator is slightly challenging. It's, there are two different terms going on here. So, you might think, well, what's different about that? Can't I just times it by root 3? over root 3 like we'll do before. That should work. Well, let's test it. 1 times root 3 is just root 3. Now if I expand the bottom parts, I've got root 3 times root 3, which is 3. Okay, that worked out. Nice one. And I've got 4 times root 3, which is 4 root 3. Okay, have I rationalized the denominator? Well, no I haven't, because I still have an irrational number in the denominator. So unfortunately, that method did not work. Okay, hasn't worked. So, what can we do in order to rationalize this denominator? Well, you may remember of a, of a method, or a style of question called a difference of two squares. Let's sort of what I mean by that. Well, a difference of two squares. If I've got root 3 plus 4 on the bottom, a difference of two squares would be root 3 minus 4. The difference is two squares because when I expand the, this, okay, if you think about it, I'll go back to what a difference of two squares is. If I have x plus 4, x minus 4, if I did this the long way, okay, x times x is x squared, I get the minus 4x plus 4x, and then I get minus 16. And what happens there, your minus 4x and plus 4x, they cancel out, so I get x squared minus 16 left over. Okay, that's what I mean by a difference of two squares. The terms in the brackets are identical, except one's a positive and one's a negative, just like you can see here. So let's see why I've done that. Why have I created a difference of two squares here? Well, let's make sure, too, that I've got to times the top and bottom by the same amount. Okay, so let's expand this and just see what actually is going to happen here. Well, 1 times root 3 is just root 3. 1 times minus 4 is just minus 4, or you can think of it 1 times this whole thing here would just be that whole thing there. Now let's expand this bit. So root 3 times root 3 is positive 3. Root 3 times negative 4 makes negative 4 root 3. Then 4 times root 3 is plus 4 root 3, and you can see that's where these two middle terms will cancel. And then 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Once I've done that, I can then look to clean it up and simplify where I can. Root 3 minus 4 obviously does not simplify. Minus 4 root 3 plus 4 root 3, well, they cancel out. So now I'm just left with 3 take away 16, which makes minus 13. And I have now got a rational number, although it's a negative number, it's okay, but it's still a rational number on the denominator. Okay, now a lot of people who, who know difference of two squares really quickly will just say square root 3, which makes 3, and square 4, which makes 16, and it's a difference of those two terms. So you can actually 
cut this line out here. You don't have to actually do those two middle terms there if you know what difference of two squares is. Okay, let's have a look at another question. By all means, if you want to pause it and have a crack at this question um, and see if you can get it right, um, that'd be good, a good thing to do. I'm going to do 3 plus root 5 here. Okay, so I'm going to times this by this whole thing on the bottom, but remember, it needs to be a difference of two squares. So I need to put a the opposite sign there, 3 minus root 5 and 3 minus root 5. If, if I don't, when I expand this out, instead of having, um, it'll be minus 3 root 5 plus 3 root 5, you'd have root um, 3 root 5 plus 3 root 5, which give you 6 root 5. They wouldn't cancel out. So let's have a quick look at this question. Okay, so again, I've given you a slightly easier question because it's one on top. So 1 times 3 is 3, and 1 times minus root 5 is minus root 5. All over. Okay, now, if you want to do the quick way, because there's a difference of two squares, you can just square the 3 and square the root 5 and put a minus in between them, okay? Um, in that case, you just get 3 minus root 5 over, or well, 3 squared is 9, root 5 squared is 5, a difference of 2 squares, we get 3 minus root 5 over 4. That's the quick way of doing it. Okay, just for this one though, I don't know what's happened there, it's gone a little bit weird. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, do it the long way, just for this one again. So let's do expand these two terms out. So 3 times 3 is 9, that's where I get the 9 from. 3 times minus root 5 is minus 3 root 5. Root 5 times 3, it's a positive, 3 root 5. Once again, you can see those, those can now cancel out. And root 5 times negative root 5 is negative 5. Okay, so again, you can see if I expand the long way out, these two middle terms will cancel, which just leaves me that 9 minus 5. So it is quicker just to square the first, square the last, and put a minus. Hence, it's, and it's called the difference of two squares. Gets rid of those two middle terms. Be careful, if you put this as a plus here and a plus here, and you didn't change the signs, you'd have plus 3 root 5, plus 3 root 5, which would be plus 6 root 5, and they wouldn't cancel out. So these two signs here must be the opposite of each other. Okay? All right, let's try another one. Let's try a slightly more challenging one this time. I'm going to do, um, this will be number 3, we'll do root 5 over 3 take away. Um, root 2. Okay, I would like you to pause at this time, have a quick crack at it, and then press play to see if you got it right. Okay, so hopefully this is what you've done. I'm going to times it by 3 plus root 2 over 3 plus root 2. Again, the reason for that is I've now created a difference of two squares on the bottom parts there. Okay, that's a minus, these two have to be a plus. Let's now expand this out. Well, root 5 times 3 makes 3 root 5. I've got a plus sign there. And root 5 times root 2 is root 6. All over. Now, once again, I'd like you to start trying to do this the quick way. This is called a difference of two squares. There is a tutorial on difference of two squares as well, so you might want to have a look back at that if you are needing a little bit extra help with that. Because... They're exactly the same, except one's a plus and one's a minus. So I'm just going to square the first, which is 9. It's a difference. I'm going to square the last. Well, root 2 times root 2 is just 2. So I'm now I'm just left with 3 root 5 plus root 6 all over 9 take away 2 equals 7. And I've now got a rational number. I can't go any small on this. That's my final um, answer. Now, once again, if you aren't comfortable with going straight to difference of two squares, which I highly encourage you to do, okay, okay, that came from here, which would have been um, your three minus root two times three plus root two, which again, if you expand it out, three times three makes nine. That's where the nine came from. Then you get. Um, plus 3 root 2, minus 3 root 2, and then the minus the 2. So again, those two middle terms cancel out, and that's why I had the 9 minus 2. But I highly encourage you to do it the quick way. 
Okay, we're going to do one last question now, guys. This is going to be probably your most challenging question that you're going to come across. Um, so this will be number four, I think. So we're going to have, let's say, 3 plus root 5 all over 2 minus root 6. Okay, why is it a bit more challenging? Well, only because I've got two terms on the numerator now. That's the only difference. It's not actually much harder. So pause it, have a quick crack, see what you come up with, and hopefully get the right answer. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've times it by 2 plus root 6 over 2 plus root 6. Once again, the reason for that is I've took the same term on the denominator and I changed it the minus to a plus because that now creates that difference of 2 squares. Okay, so let's expand this now. So this is a bit more challenging because now you've got two terms on top. So it's just like doing the bottom part, I guess, but you've got different terms on the top. So 3 times 2 makes 6. 3 times root 6 makes plus 3 root 6. Root 5 times 2 makes 2 root 5. And then root 5 times root 6 makes root 30. So you can see definitely why it's a bit more challenging there. The bottom part is just exactly what we've been doing. It's a difference of two squares now. Okay, so square the first, we get four minus because of the difference, and then square root six, we get just six. So now I'm going to rewrite the top part. I'm going to look up here and kind of simplify anything there. I don't think I can. Again, 30 can't go any further down because I guess you can't be divided by four, can't divide it by um, five, oh, sorry, nine. Um, 16. I'm looking for perfect squares there to break that down. That can't be broken down. So it's just 6 plus 3 root 6 plus 2 root 5 plus root 30 all over 4 take away 6 is negative 2. Okay. The only thing that some people like to do, and this is in the more advanced, uh, I guess, styles of questions where later on you, you combine this with harder things, is they often don't like having the negative on the bottom. So they actually take the negative at the top and they change everything. They put a negative 6 um, and make a, a negative 3 root 6, a negative 2 root 5, a negative root 30, and put it all over the positive 2 but to be honest with you at this stage I wouldn't be too concerned about by that okay having the negative 2 on the bottom is, is, is okay it's just hard for harder questions when you're adding um, things like 1 over 3 plus root 2 um, plus 2 over 3 minus root 4 things like that um, they all, all often want to have an uh, the negative at the top but again that's something to come Okay, look, this is, again, it's a basic rundown of more challenging rationalizing denominator questions. I hope this made useful um, to you, um, particularly for you, Moel. Um, again, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, but, yeah, any other questions, guys, please feel free to ask or, uh, or request some different tutorials. Thanks.